Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to discuss whether you should invest in modern cards or vintage cards. So I went to the card shop and I picked up some other cards, um, a lot of vintage cards, and I was just thinking to myself like, hey, I think it'd be a great idea to go over the, not pros and cons, but the benefits of investing in vintage cards versus modern cards. Um, so these are some of the cards I picked up. I haven't, I haven't sleeved them all up yet, but um, it's a lot of vintage. They had a lot of vintage for pretty good prices, so I picked some up. This is a Vaporeon. Um, a lot of these are in really bad condition. And I guess we'll... I'm probably going to ramble again just because I think rambling is kind of the way to go at this point. But I think um, overall, it really depends on the situation, right? Because you have modern cards. Like, I have some here. Like, there's just Giratina EX, but this is not really one of the better cards. But it's still pretty expensive. I have a lot of the more modern cards right here. I just picked up this Lugia. Um, so these, this is a good display of all the modern cards, like the modern alternate arts and um, expensive cards there is. So we have an Aerodactyl V, Galarian Ultra V, Lugia V, Charger V. As you can see, the borders are like silver. Um, all the art really pops out of the card really, really well. Um, beautifully designed. So the artwork is literally supreme in my opinion. And then you have some of the older stuff, like there's a Slow King, right? Yellow borders with just the hollow foil in the middle. You have the Dark Dug Trio, same thing. The Giovanni's Persian. So a lot of these cooler, cooler uh, vintage cards. And then I'm probably going to sleeve stuff while I talk. It's probably the best way of doing it. Because um, I haven't sorted these yet. I think now, now is a good time. But so this is going to be kind of like economics, like, this is kind of heavily played, um, like common economics here. So as of right now in 2023, there is a lot of supply in the market of a lot of the modern cards. So they're more readily available than maybe some of the cards that are more vintage. So in turn, that is going to make the modern cards worth a little less. Um, as you can see, like throughout time, these vintage cards haven't gone up insane amounts right like i think you can they're still like pretty reasonable if they're like unlimited and everything like that um because they're easier to get somewhat than uh than the first edition and shadowless cards but the artwork is actually really really kind of comparable like it's cool it's kind of dope i kind of like it and it just brings back a lot of nostalgia like people will be willing to pay for like nostalgia and everything like that um so i would say like supply scarcity the artwork comes into it um which is more in demand, what's my cotter now, what are people going to pay for? And I really like did some research over the past couple of weeks on like number of sales, right? Um, and all this type of stuff. And these hollow foils, um, the older ones, you really can't compare to the newer hollow foils because the newer hollow foils are like kind of really bad, right? Nobody's willing to buy them. So you really can't compare the two. And these are a lot... I guess they were, they weren't as hard to get as like the the more the more uh, alternate arts today. Like the alternate arts today, it takes you like I don't know one in three thousand to get the Umbreon three thousand packs, or one in like a couple hundred or thousand to even get like an alternate art and stuff like that. So it's definitely harder to pull better cards than it was back in the day. But then again, these are really like twenty years old, right? It's it's extremely hard to get these cards ever again. So. That's why I would say overall, in my point of view, if I had to pick whether you should invest in modern or vintage, I'm going to say this and you can take, you know, my points or you can just go opposite. I'd love to hear your opinions, but, and, and by the way, I have, a, I have a really big bias towards more modern arts. Like I prefer this over a lot of the vintage stuff, even though like I grew up in the vintage era. And that's because I think the artwork is a lot better in these newer cards than in the older cards, in my personal opinion. Although the older cards are pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, so I think vintage is the way to go for the time being. And the reason I say that is because there's less supply in the market, meaning it's harder to come by these cards, um, especially ones that are near mint. If you can find one of the cards, the basic cards or cards that are like, 
I don't know, in the middle era, like 2008, 2004, all that type of stuff. It's really hard to find near mint stuff. So people will be willing to pay top dollar for it. So the, the supply is low, but the demand there is, is like almost always present. Like people are always going to want like this base set stuff. They're going to want um, just those types of cards, right? So because the demand is so high for these these cards, you know, I feel like vintage is, is probably the way to go. I would say the demand for alternate arts is definitely really, really high as well um, and definitely bumps the price up. But it's harder to get your hands on something more vintage and it's easier it's right now it's not as hot so it's it's less money to invest into like base set and vintage stuff than it would be to invest in more modern cards that that are going for too much money like this lugia and charizard and rayquaza and grilling moltres aerodactyl these are all like hundreds of dollars like they cost hundreds of dollars to even get into and i'm not saying it's a bad thing it's definitely like a barrier to entry but for the sole fact that you can get in like unlimited cards or you know how regular hollow foils for a little less money like talking less than 100 bucks um less than 20 bucks i would say you could probably turn around and and hold on to that or flip that in a couple of years because people are, are always going to want it so if you can get a deal i guess on the lower cards like these people are probably willing to give them up for cheaper and you would get a pretty good deal off of it then i would say snag these like i got these at a pretty good deal like five dollars for this electrode is really good people are going to want this you could probably pay for like I don't know ten dollars or fifteen dollars hold it hold it a couple years or so um people are going to want it always so i would say the basic cards and like vintage cards are always going to be in demand regardless because people are always going to want to collect the older stuff um that's kind of how the way uh collecting works and everything like that now if you plan on holding alternate arts and those types of cards these fluctuate more often because there's more supply in the market right as of right now which means that, yeah, you can you you can probably depending on where you get in, you can probably make money, but it's gonna still be pretty hard because you don't know when is the tipping point. Well, the tipping point should be when the the card goes out of stock, meaning that there's not that many, there's not that many cards on the market left. It means people aren't willing to sell them and they aren't willing to buy them, not buy them, aren't willing to, and they're holding on to them. Is what I meant. So it really depends on those two factors. Um, and more people are going to want to hold on to these two, especially like because they're really, really pretty, the alternates and everything like that. So yeah, in the long term, if you're talking like five to 10 years, I think modern is really good. Modern is probably the way to go if you're going to do that, because over time, I think these cards will explode in value, in my opinion, um, just because they're really hard to come by and they're like, they're like full full arts and everything like that like that's really cool who wouldn't want to own a card like that maybe not for like a 100 bucks but who wouldn't want to own cards like these they're really really pretty and here's the the charizard i had to buy that low key both charizards and everything like that um so so yeah i mean when you when you when you factor in like the demand of cards and how old they are and everything like that um yes i believe the modern cards will go up over time in the longer term meaning you have like a longer horizon for this type of stuff but for the time being if you're looking to like let's say flip a card or like invest in cards now and plan on getting rid of it within the next five years then yeah i would say vintage is part of the way to go because if you buy a card like this there's always going to be someone out there willing to willing to buy it um depending on the right price and everything like that so i would say yeah um if, if i had to pick I would definitely pick vintage um if we take a look at the pros okay let's count them right so who has the better artwork in my opinion i'm gonna give one point for the alternate arts or quote-unquote modern artworks right they're better definitely better in my opinion um you guys can have different opinions it is what it is who has the more supply so because a lot of these cards are like 20 years old 10 years old depending on like how far along the spectrum you go, then it's going to be one point towards a lot of the vintage stuff because they're out of print, they're hard to get, the the supply is low. So one for supply for vintage, one for um, artwork for modern. Now, which is more in demand? I would say, truthfully, 
the only cards that are in demand for are these are like the alternate arts and a lot of the the better artworks for sure which means yeah in the, in the top like one percent of a set then yeah you can you can pick the the top cards for sure they're gonna be a lot more money right they're more in demand but also the demand for vintage cards is unrelenting there's literally as as people grow older they're still gonna want to come back to a lot of the more vintage stuff so the, vin the vintage demand is never ending which means that you'll always have a buyer for these things so overall i'm gonna have to give it slight edge to vintage stuff i know that's kind of hard to hear but i believe vintage has a little edge tiny tiny bit of edge in terms of demand and right now which is worth a little more well again if you're talking if you're talking um the, the best alternate arts and everything like that that you can get out of the more modern stuff that's probably going to run you uh let's see i think the giratina is probably the most right now out of the more modern stuff and that's like 300 bucks max um which is the more expensive you're gonna you're talking first set um first edition shadowless um older cards such as like the shining gyarados or not shining gyarados i don't even know i can't even think at, this, at the moment but a lot of the older cards are worth a ton if you can get them in near mint condition pretty much everything in the modern sets is considered near mint right it's pretty hard not to get near mint because of how people collect these days back then people used to just sub stuff in binders and that's that's pretty much it like you wouldn't get any um you would get zero zero protection on on those binders and everything like that so yeah of course um it's harder to get vintage stuff in near mint condition for sure but that, that kind of leads into your favor though because if you can get a near mint vintage copy of something that's gonna be worth a lot and it's and you find them at like you can find them anywhere garage sales yard sales i don't even know like online facebook marketplaces online somewhere else but obviously you have to know where to get it and source it which is really tough a lot of people have this stuff hiding in their their uh closets and everything like that and it's really hard to get so at the same time ooh, this one's kind of cool that's like a hollow bleed um at the same time hard to source definitely easier to go ahead and buy a bunch of modern copies of a lugia if you wanted to buy a ton of lugias you could you could buy it straight up but a lot of the the more vintage stuff it's kind of harder to come by which means people are going to want it more um kind of like high high demand low supply so that's gonna be my final answer. I'm gonna say like you should invest in a lot of the vintage stuff. I'm not gonna lie. At at the time being, I feel like there will always be a buyer for it. You'll always get a good price on it. The price doesn't really drop on vintage. Obviously, it, it has to be an in demand card. People are gonna have to want it. It can't be just like a crappy card that nobody wants for sure. Um. Yeah, I, I won't lie. There's some alternate arts that are like undeniably better for sure that people are going to want more um but even like some of this other stuff like the middle tier ultra arts they have they have better artworks in my opinion than a lot of the vintage stuff like who's gonna want this over this obviously some of you older guys would want this for sure but a lot of the newer people are going to want this so yeah i guess the demand kind of evens out but <sighs> i'm telling you like as of right now it, it in my opinion the vintage stuff is probably the way to go if you want to flip it quicker if you want to make quicker profits because you you can get the vintage stuff at cheaper prices and then flip it quicker within three years than um something like an alternate art like if you pay like i don't know a hundred dollars for this rayquaza v or this dragonite v like it's gonna fluctuate between like 190 um 120 for the longest time and you're really never gonna get you know what you really want for it which is like 200 right but if you buy like i don't know i need a good example if you buy this this vial plume for like 10 bucks right and you want to go ahead and flip it for like 30 or 40 obviously you can if it's in near mint condition um it's all speculation obviously if you sell a market price yeah but i think as time goes on if, if people run out of near mint copies they're gonna want something like this then yeah you can charge kind of a premium for it and you'll get like uh, the best dollar price which is nice so, like, the older it gets, it's already, like, 20 years old. The older it gets, the more money you're going to get from it. So, easier to flip, in my opinion. So, I've kind of, like, been shifting my my game plan into buying more vintage stuff just to hold on to. Um, especially at these are, like, 20 years old and harder to come by. Always high in demand. Um, but, obviously, every time I run across 
an alternate art that is for a reasonable price market price or even below market price i'm gonna go ahead and pick that up as well so i'm not really investing in a lot of these mid-tier mid cards like i'm not taking like a, a lugia v or like a lugia um i'm investing in like the more higher dollar cards now would it be a good idea to invest in like a lugia v which is like a 10 bucks right now i think so realistically like those cards because they're like very pokemon specific and people want them like higher in demand type stuff yeah i would say that's not even a bad idea like you gotta really think of it as like an economics type of thing like i, I would always think of when buying a card hey what would i pay for it how much supply is there and how and what would someone else pay for it that's what, that's why i immediately think of so if i think like hey i haven't seen this dark dark trio before um the shop is offering me eight dollars for it to pay for it heck yeah what is it was the current market price on it about 20 okay if i was someone else would i pay 20 dollars for this card hmm looks pretty good yeah i think i would hey i'm gonna go ahead and buy this for like eight to ten bucks and then turn around and flip it for like 20 and make the difference you know and then i could just kind of rinse and repeat if i wanted to or i can keep this card for the long term hey it's a really cool card i think i want to keep this in my collection and then kind of you know go do it like that too just build your collection up instead of just flipping but like i guess it really depends on your collection goals um but i think collecting vintage is always a good idea i'm not even gonna lie like it's it's just such it's such a high demand that everyone's gonna want it um and i think a lot of the cards are cool yeah i don't think some of the artworks are the best in terms of like compared comparable to alternate arts but overall i think the artwork the artwork of the hollow foils is kind of comparable and it gives that nostalgia feeling as well so i would give it like a b versus like an a plus for the other cards and this is some of the cards i picked up like just some of the ooh, some of the um, cards these are all like less than a dollar like 50 cents or something so i picked a bunch of these up i think i have a picture man uh i picked some of these up just to have so yeah those are all these these are pretty cool pretty inexpensive cards i think that's gonna do it guys i have the final verdict i'm telling you like if you can get the older stuff for cheaper prices, obviously grab it. And I think, obviously, they're more liquid, the older stuff. Very cool hollow foils. For the newer stuff, you have to be very selective. Very, very, very selective in terms of what you buy. I would say if, if you're going to invest in newer stuff, only go for, like, the top 1% of cards because they're so scarce and hard and high in demand that it'll go up over time. But for right now... I'm going to say you should invest in vintage while you can, while it's, it's, it's pretty cheap, you know, because I feel like there'll be a time where people will want to get back into investing in some of the older stuff. And when you have it, you can sell it to them at whatever price you want. So I think that's going to be it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.